All right, guys, we are back with another Real Talk episode. Today, we're going to be stepping back a little bit further because we're going to be talking about carry methods for your everyday carry pistol and why I choose to carry appendix. So you guys have seen this holster on the channel before. This is the Tier 1 Concealed MSP Modern Samurai Project holster. And the reason I love this holster is because it's the last holster I'll ever need to buy. I have a ton of holsters that are also from Tier 1 Concealed that are cut for different guns and different optics. And it's great for if you have one pistol, you're not planning on buying another pistol that you ever want to carry. If you just have your one go-to gun, then you can get a specific holster and light um, you know, combination. But I like the MSP because it indexes on the actual light itself. So we're running uh, Glock, um, Glock 19X here with a TLR 1HL. And so the holster actually, you could fit any gun in here that will fit this light on here. So it's actually cut for the light and then it's just a little oversized, which works out great because I have the PMM comp on here, but it's got an open end. So if you have a threaded barrel, you're good to go. But before we get into too much of like the setup uh, of the Glock 19X, I want to just talk about why I carry appendix. I think a lot of you guys, a lot of guys when I tell them, especially like newer people to the firearms world will ask me like, hey, why? Why, isn't that uncomfortable? That's the number one question I get is like, isn't that uncomfortable? And it's like, well, it's not as uncomfortable as having holes in me. So, and I know that's a, it's a you know, smart ass answer, but at the same time, uh, I've carried at the four o'clock position before. And the issue I had with that was, and I was running like a We The People holster. So a cheaper, like $40 holster. There's nothing against a cheap holster if it works, but it wasn't cut for light and it, so I think a light is a requirement, as, as I've talked about in previous videos, a light is really a requirement, in my opinion, for an everyday carry pistol, because you need to know what you're shooting at. And most crimes happen at night, or even if you're in a, you know, go from a bright lit area outside to into a tar dark area, uh, a light is just a, a necessary thing for me. It's, it's above the requirement for a red dot for me, even though red dots make shooting so much, shooting accurately, quickly, very, very much like a cheat code. But uh, it wasn't cut for that. And then I just had a lot of issues with my draw because my, my shirt would often get caught on my pistol grip and it would just slow me down. Not to mention the fact that I was often printing. And when I was, I know a lot of guys are like, well, just wear bigger clothes or move the position a little bit. I get that. Right. But the way my body shaped at least, and the way uh, my pistol was, it was actually the HK VP nine that I was carrying back here. I would just be printing a lot and I'd be at the grocery store and like, would bend over to grab some produce. And I'm like, man, anyone can just come. There's no retention. There's no retention uh, or locking mechanism like there is on like a Safari Land holster. So anyone could just come up and run and grab my gun. And sometimes if you're in a sketchy part of town, you know, you're at the a, a gas station. We've all been to that gas station where we're just like, man, this is pretty sketchy. You know, like I didn't want to be printing. I don't want anyone to be able to run up behind me somewhere where I can't fend them off and, and grab my pistol. Not to mention that if you get a good appendix carry holster, not only is it the fastest draw to first shot, for me at least, and I think most guys would agree, it's the fastest method for concealed carry, then the other thing is I have it right here in the front. Uh, it doesn't print as you guys can see. I mean, I'm backed up all the way. I hope you guys can see this right here. So my holster's right here. You can't see it whatsoever. And I do tend to buy you know, pants in a one size bigger or a you know, bigger size shirt so that I'm not print I'm not wearing you know, skin tight, uh, you know, under armor shirts here obviously but with that being said this is a pretty pretty large firearm uh, 17 rounds it's a full size grip it's got a magwell on it it's got a comp on it and i am a pretty big guy i'm 6'1 like 245 pounds but it, it's concealed completely and so obviously work with it a little bit for your body type but the appendix carry for me once you get used to it once you get a good holster then you can really uh, you, it, there's nothing even compares. And I'm going to show you guys here in a minute, just doing, do some practice draws for you guys. Obviously we're not going to be pulling any shots in the room, but uh, I am consistently able to get a uh, 1.5 or 1.6 seconds from draw to first shot on my shot timer at the range. And that is, again, I'm not claiming to be some unbelievable, I'm just a regular guy. That's pretty freaking quick. And I'm very happy with that. I have a lot of confidence that if I ever needed to draw and get a shot on target, I would be, you know, through my training, I would be able to adequately protect myself, my family, and any other innocent life around me. So yes, that is why. So the number one question is, is it uncomfortable? The number one answer I have is, uh, yes, if you're sitting down, 
but not really unless you're sitting down for a very long period of time and if you don't have the proper clothing if you don't have the proper belt the proper holster if you're you know if you're leaning forward you know if you're bending over constantly all day yeah it could be a little uncomfortable but instead of bending over you try to bend at your knees that helps a lot uh, but also when I'm standing, I completely forget it's there. That's how comfortable it is. It is not uncomfortable whatsoever when I'm just standing statically straight up and down. Again, when I'm sitting, if I'm going for a ride in the car, uh, you know, if it's a long ride, I'll take it off and set it beside me or tuck it underneath my console. So there's ways you can, you know, avoid that pain, so to speak. But I've gone on very long car rides, you know, where I just felt like leaving it on and it wasn't uh, terrible. You, you, you forget it's there when you start carrying it every single day. So the number one method and the fastest and most secure method for carrying my pistol is in these in this tier one concealed appendix holster. So, uh, and it's the fastest by far. So I'll show you, I train two ways. I, keep, I do a hands up training method where I'm, you know, simulating I'm at, at gunpoint or potentially, you know, for any reason having my hands up, hey, hands up, don't move. Someone's robbing, whatever, whatever place I'm in. And so this is the number one method that I train. I really feel more comfortable training from here than I do hands down, but I'm trying to do more hands down training. Uh, so it doesn't look weird if uh, someone, you know, a gunman walks in into whatever it might be, the gas station I'm in. And uh, I'm just like, you know, I'll put my hands up. So I'll do, I'll train both ways, but I'll just show you guys how quickly you can get to draw the first shot. And let me just double check. My gun is clear. It is. We have an empty mag in here. And uh, let's just all the safety guys out there, just make sure. So, uh, and people are like, oh, aren't you nervous the gun's gonna go off? Well, that's where having a quality firearm with an OEM trigger and uh, safety measures in place. There's no external safety on a Glock, but there are internal safeties with it and having a good Kydex holster with retention, meaning it's never gonna fall out or nothing's gonna be able to get in there and get in the trigger guard and accidentally pull the trigger is very important. Also, we'll talk wedges here in a second, but I just wanna show you guys how quickly you can go from Draw it first shot, and that was a really, I got camera shy there. So if you're good on the range, you're gonna be bad in real life. If you're excellent on the range, you'll be good in real life. So train so that you can be, have it be muscle memory. So again, and I'm trying not to bump my mic here, it's a new mic setup, so that might be messing with me mentally as well, but, and there we are. So, um, and then also we have the backup magazine over here as well, so let's do a simulated uh, first round shot. I'm going to aim at this spot on the wall. So go from right here. Get my thumb caught. Okay. Change the mag. Second shot. Okay. Let's try that again because that was pretty slow. And um, I will say every time I leave the house, guys, I do a few practice draws. And that is when the gun is loaded. Obviously, I'm not pressing the trigger at those times. But if... It, it just helps to not have to, so dry fire is very important, but it helps to kind of maintain that dry fire, at least not get any worse. So if you're not dedicating time, emptying your gun out, going up, you know, going wherever you can train and just doing this over and over again, okay? And I'll keep getting my hand caught. That's an issue I have. Sometimes I get my thumb caught on my shirt on the draw, just like that. I keep thinking about it now. Um, but if you don't have time to dedicate 30 minutes or 20 or even 10 minutes a day to just doing the dry fire, when I put my holster on before I leave the house, I'm just like right here. Okay, got, got the dot. Find your dot, right? Because that's a big issue for a lot of people shooting red dots is finding their red dot. Okay, got it. And so that's all, I'll do that five or six times before I leave the house. That way I have that rust, so to speak, knock off that rust if it's been you know, a week or two weeks since I've been to the range or since I've been able to actually dedicate 15, 20 minutes to just doing it dry fire. So again, there we go. And both of those were clean sight pictures. That's not me just, you know, pulling the trigger. I'm, I'm only pulling the trigger once I get my sight picture and I see, um, see what I can, I'm shooting at. So again, right here, I'll, before I leave the house, I'll do this, but obviously without pulling the trigger because I have one in the chamber, but right there. Let's reset the trigger. Let's try the dry fire now. And so you could see already how much faster I've gotten. And it doesn't hurt to do that tap rack practice, like practice that malfunction. Um, although I don't have a dummy round or anything in here, but uh, in order to get the slide lock back, change the mag, you could just simulate a tap rack 
And I'm sure there's plenty of instructors out there who have videos on how to train dry fire. This is just what I do. And I get to go to the range enough, fortunately, that I, I can train live fire quite often. So uh, I'm not typically doing like too much dry fire with my pistol besides just drawing, acquiring my sight, and then, you know, presenting the pistol. So I do that pretty often. Uh, one issue I do have sometimes is that I drop the slide release before the mag is fully seated in the in the gun. So that's just something to look out for as well. Let's do that one more time and see if I can knock some of this rust off. Okay. And so there you go, guys. That's pretty much my regimen. Um, again, I'm definitely... Definitely faster off camera, it seems like. But uh, it, it just repetition is all it is, guys. It's just presenting. There's several steps to it. There's a shirt grab. I used to grab my shirt down here, but I used to accidentally ball tap myself. So I stopped grabbing my shirt at the bottom. It just seems to be better um, to grab it like right here in the center, lift it up, grab the pistol, pr pull it out, get it up and out, and then meet your hands and then press it out. One of the things I don't like when I do is when I sweep it up, because that's just a bad habit to form, especially because if you're in self-defense distances, I don't want to put my pistol in the range of, of the person or the, the perpetrator, I guess you could say, whatever word, of the, of the person trying to kill me to actually grab my gun, knock it away, or wrestle for it whatsoever. So I like to practice just boom, 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 and then find my dot. And so I kind of slow is smooth, smooth is fast. I didn't start going this fast when I first started. So as you get better at it, you can increase the speed, but it's most important to be, to be uh, smooth at first, for sure. So let's just do that one more time. Ah, dude, I'm fucking, I'm blowing it here, making myself look like a noob. Okay, there we go. That'll be the last one. But you guys get the point. It's very important to train and most of us don't have the luxury of living on land that they could shoot on or, you know, being able to go to the range every other day. So if you can dry fire practice every other day, it's going to make you so much faster when you do go to the range because, you know, the only thing then that you're not training is recoil management and just making sure you have a good grip on the gun, uh, you know, when you're dry firing will also help with that. So getting that good grip quickly as well. So I guess I could do one or two up here at close, but then I'm going to talk real quick about off body carry. It's just not something I really recommend because it's not as fast. It's not as secure. And, um, it's just not as good It's nowhere near as fast actually as drawing from, uh, the appendix holster. So I'll do one up close. So you guys can see kind of what my hands look like when I present. Okay. My trigger wasn't reset. Let's try that again. Okay. Hopefully you guys saw that, but that is, uh, this is my main squeeze. So I guess before we move on, let's just talk about it real quick. You guys have seen this in the past couple of videos. If you guys have been watching the channel, but we do have a new, the CAG works raised and extended slide release here because when I was gripping the pistol on the left-hand side of the gun, I was accidentally hitting the OEM slide stop slide release here. So it was either not locking my slide back, um, on the last round or accidentally locking it back when there's still uh, rounds in the mag. So that is the newest addition, which is kind of wearing on my Cerakote a little bit there, as you can see, but that's the price you got to pay for, for having the increased, um, increased actual like usability of the gun. But real quick, cause we talked about this before, we'll just go over PMM comp, TLR, HL1, um, Streamlight there on the front. The PMM comp is, is like a cheat code. I love that thing. Ameriglow suppressor height sights with a blacked out rear and a orange tritium front. And then we have a Trigicon RMR Type 2 in the Coyote Brown, CAG Works raised and extended slide release, OEM trigger, OEM mag release, and then an SLR Rifle Works 19X of Magwell there. So that is the everyday carry. Also, I guess I'll mention the slide was milled by Maple Leaf Firearms. So Maple Leaf did a pretty awesome rear iron sight forward and uh, Zafari Precision threaded barrel as well, which they're on the cheaper end of the custom parts market, but I've never had an issue with this barrel and you know, it's good. It's, there's nothing, I don't have no complaints about it. So with that being said, 
if you must carry off body. So when am I actually carrying off body? Primarily when I'm going to the gym. And uh, what I would do when I go to the gym is I have another holster that, not this guy here, but I'll put a Velcro, like you have the Velcro that you could stick, stick the Velcro on the back of this thing. And then I have this, uh, I believe it's called like the transit sling. I forget what this actual vertex bag is called, but it has this little hidden back pocket here and I would stick the holster in there and just Velcro it in so that when I needed to access it, I could spin it around, open it up. I guess I could show you guys that. It's not gonna interfere with my microphone, but um, kind of sloppily show you guys since I don't actually have a holster in here, but it goes over like this. And then when you, when you grab this pull tab down here, you can be holding onto this. You can pull it around like so, rip it open, and then grab your firearm. You just have to be careful not to flag yourself because there's a lot of opportunity for that when you're drawing out of a bag like this. And then more recently, something I'm very excited about, full disclosure, this was sent to me and full disclosure, I have not actually used it yet, but I did request these guys to send this to me because I thought it was a really interesting concept and I've wanted something like this for a long time, is this is from 945 Industries and this is like their uh, fanny pack, I guess you can call it, but you just um, throw it on like this, it's like a crossbody. oh, wrong way, sorry guys, all right, try that again. Just trying not to bump this mic and destroy my audio. So it goes on like this and it has an actual holster cut for this gun and this light. That's the biggest thing guys, is you want an actual holster cut for your specific gun that's made out of Kydex that has retention. And so this fits right in here like so, and it clicks in so it's got retention in there. And now I have the ability to zip this thing up. And it's got this little pull tab right here in the front. So you just pop that out. And then I might need to do a little, a little bit of adjusting of this Kydex holster in here. But then I can just pull this down and then draw my firearm like so. So I like this a little bit better than that big old um, Vertex bag. It's a little less um, conspicuous, especially because the Vertex bag is camo. But it's also like good for if you're going on a walk or, you know, you're going to the gym and you don't want to bring, uh, you know, you can't wear your pistol on your on your belt because you're wearing gym shorts or sweatpants or whatever it is. So I like this idea for, again, those those times when you're not really going to be wearing a belt or wearing jeans. And I know they have like new sweatpants and stuff, like all kinds of companies come out with different stuff. But this also has like a little strap that goes around your waist area to make it more secure if you wanted it to. But I'll probably end up just taking this thing off, which uh, we could just do right now, actually, because it's got this little pull tab. Well, we'll do it later, but again, this is another cool idea, but the biggest thing is with anything like this is you don't want a, a gun loaded just floating around in your bag. And I do recommend having one in the chamber. So anytime you could have a Kydex holster that can retain the firearm so that you can keep one in the chamber and still quickly, relatively quickly for off body, draw your pistol out and then have it ready to go bang right when you touch the trigger because you have one in the chamber versus just letting a, a gun float around in a bag uh, and leaving you know the mag full without one in the chamber, that's gonna be a lot slower. So if you have to off body carry, again, the only time I really do is when I go to the gym or you know if I'm going for a walk or, or a jog or something like that where I'm wearing sweatpants or shorts, then I would consider something like an off body carry. But, um, and I'm very excited about this one. So again, full disclosure, I haven't actually used it yet like at the range with live fire. I've done a lot of dry fire just drawing out of this thing. And it's uh, it's really well made. I really do like this. So more to come. I might even do a full review on this thing for the 945 Industries uh, to talk more about this. Because again, it's very inconspicuous. You know, your wife could wear this, your girlfriend could wear this, and no one would think anything of it. Maybe on me, it looks a little more conspicuous because of just the way I look. But uh, it is still, uh, it's a very, um, it's a very good option for off-body carry. But Primarily, guys, I'm running, I'm running this Glock 19X in this Tier 1 concealed holster. There's very few times, again, that I ever leave the house without it because it is just that good. And when you get a good holster and it's built to you, then it's very comfortable. I will talk real quick about wedges. So back in the day when I was running this Tier 1 concealed, you can see I have like a, it was like a foam block, like a yoga foam block that I had cut and just used some double-sided Velcro to make my own wedge here. But um, and that, there's nothing wrong with that, like a DIY that works pretty well. But tier one concealed does, again, they don't sponsor this channel, guys. I paid full price for all this stuff. And so I'm just 
shouting them out because they have a good product that, that I use regularly. So I paid for this wedge pack too. This is their XL. It came with like four different wedges. So they have these wedge packs that you can glue, you know, they have double sided tape. You could stick them to the back of your holster. I had one on here that I actually was, was too thick. And so I kind of ripped half of it off. And then just through wearing it every single day, you can see it's kind of just worn down. But that little bit of um, foam there does push the bottom of the gun out, pushing the top half into your abdomen a little bit. Not to the point where it's uncomfortable, but so that it's printing less. So that actually adds some comfort as well, that, that piece. So you don't have this sharp kydex kind of hitting you. It's kind of this foam, this soft foam piece that um, sits between you and the, and the holster itself. But uh, the cool thing about tier one concealed holsters is they have this bungee. So if you wanted to get rid of the, the plus one, you could just untie this bungee and, and just carry the pistol itself. And these other versions have these snap buttons. So you can just actually pull them apart and there's buttons that you snap together if you wanted to run the backup magazine caddy. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I think that everyone who, I have a lot of friends who like have a rifle, but they don't have a pistol or they have a pistol and they don't carry it every day. Uh, the best gun that you have is the gun that you have on you. So consider, you don't have to go with the exact setup I have obviously, but consider finding a good Kydex holster with retention. It's important to have retention so this thing doesn't fly out. Uh, if you ever do get in a wrestling match or something like that, someone tackles you and you're fighting for your life, you know, it slowly slides out, but it's, um, I have that, that, that's adjustable as well. I can make that tighter, but I like it to have a clean, smooth draw, not too tight. So it's got good retention. It's not going to fall out on its own. It, again, it slips out slowly, but I can adjust that and make it tighter if I really wanted to, but I like the way it's set up. It's set up for me. And again, if you're not carrying your pistol every day, it's not going to do you any good if it's at home and you're in a situation where your life's at in danger or innocent life around you. That's the whole goal of, of me training is to be the biggest asset to freedom that I can be and defend innocent life. Obviously, starting with, with my family, my daughter, my wife, myself, my friends, and then extending to any random innocent person out there on the street. Like if I can prevent a catastrophe, I don't have this hero complex. I'm not looking for a fight, but... Um, if anyone ever did shoot up a mall that I was in, like I would be really, uh, I'd be really upset if I forgot my pistol or decided to not carry my pistol at home. Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable. It's an extra thing you got to do every single day. It's an extra responsibility that you have. You can't go out and get drunk in the middle of the day if you got your pistol on you. But again, it's, it's worth the trade off. It's worth being able to have it in case you need it. And then hopefully you never do. So that's going to be it guys for today. That's kind of my number one go-to method for carrying my pistol. Um, and if you guys do want to support the channel, there's four ways you can really do so. Number one way is a super thanks. It's like Patreon, but right here on YouTube, it goes directly to the YouTube channel. So that is very helpful. So thank you guys to anyone who is even considering doing that. Secondly is using the bro code RDB10 over at brownells.com. That's RDB10. Saves you 10% off at brownells.com. Uh, that's anything over $150 or more. And most things apply. I think there's only a few exclusions on that website for that code. Uh, then there's rangedaybro.com for merch, gun charms, anything like that. We have a whole line of merch up on there. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about that merch? If you want to see anything different, if you want to see hats or something like that, I might add those as well. And then lastly, just liking, commenting, subscribing guys helps to push this algorithm to more like-minded individuals and grow the second amendment community so that we can have more, hopefully more young people. Cause we all know how boomers kind of let things go with the NRA and whatnot. Not, not calling the boomers out, but I mean. We, we, they gave up a lot of rights, and I think we need more young people to be fighting and not only standing our ground on gun rights, but also regaining some gun rights that we lost in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s. So uh, that's another way you can support the channel. But thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure you're dry fire training. Get out there. Get some actual range time in. And uh, anything I could do to help, you could DM me over on Instagram as well if you have any questions. But I love you guys. Until next time, see you later.